Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this. This is Floating in Dreams, and today we are going to be swatching out all of my cream and liquid eyeshadows. And a lot of you have been asking me if I can give them some recommendations for one and done shadows. So this video will be, be a two in one, because a lot of my favorite one and done shadows are within this pile of cream and liquid shadows that I'm about to show you. Welcome to everybody watching today, thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be about my cream and liquid shadows. I decided to group them together because I don't have that much in both categories and I felt it just would be a better video to join them up. I will also have a stray pigment for you here, which is one that I was really impressed with when I swatched it, so I wanted to make sure I showed you that. So yeah, these are my cream shadows that you're looking at and then we're going to go into my creams when we've gone over all of these. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And this video is definitely coming in at the things I love chatting about. As much as I love my eyeshadow palettes, I also like making sure that I get the use out of my singles, and that's why I do these kind of videos as well. I feel the focus in the makeup community is too much on palettes, and I'm trying to break the mold <laughs> um, by doing videos about a lot of my single palettes as, at the moment as well. They don't do as well on my channel, but, you know, I want to chat about the things I want to chat about, and that's what I'm going to keep on doing. So, if you like that sort of thing, and you would like to join my little snow angel club, then hit subscribe down below, because that's what we've got going on here. So yes, cream and liquid shadows. Not a category I go in too, too often in my day-to-day -day life. Mainly because, for, for me, a lot of these are one-and-done shadows. So I very often love traveling with these. That, that's what I love most. But that's why I did a video last May, so I'll make sure to link it in the description box down below, where I used quite a good chunk of the ones I hadn't tried yet. And in that video, I'm showing you swatches and looks as well that I did. So if you want more of a review-style video for me about cream shadows, then that's possible as well. Um, so I've got a lot going on here, so let me clear the decks a little bit so that we can talk about these as well. So this is the first section we need to chat about, and as you can see, a lot of my cream shadows are in fact ColourPop Super Shock shadows. Now, I've, I watch quite a lot of creators that, like me, are smaller, more mature ladies with creasy lids who have hooded eyes, and a lot of them have been saying how they cannot make Super Shocks work for them. As you can see, it's what I have most, because it is my favorite cream shadow formula. So, let me tell you how I make these work for me, and maybe if you also have hooded slash deep set eyes, you can also start making these work for you, because these are a great affordable option for cream shadows, and they do some lovely things for one and done shadows, so I'd hate for you to miss out on it. So what I like to do, in case you're not familiar with my content, is I double prime my lids. So I have deep set eyes that are also hooded, I've got creasy lids, I've got fine lines and wrinkles, like we've got a whole spiel going on. So what I like to do is that at the start of my makeup routine when I do my face primer, so before I wear anything else, I like down, laying down a layer of the Milani eyeshadow primer. That is my favorite one, but any clear favorite primer will probably do. I've been doing this for years. And then later in my makeup routine, I get to the actual eye look. I go in with a MAC paint pot, which I set with a cream colored single shadow. Um, doesn't really matter what shadow, I've used others in the past, but I'm currently using vanilla from MAC. Because I have that as a single lying about, and I wanted to make sure I use it up. So that's what I tend to do. Um, the Milani eyeshadow primer is really against creasing. The paint pot I kind of use to block out any veins or redness that I may have going on on my lids. But a paint pot by itself for me, just like most cream shadows, just doesn't work. And I've tried the concealer method of using like a concealer as an eyeshadow primer, but most concealers are far too emollient for my creasy eyelids. So that's why I really feel that using that Milani primer and then making sure that gets some time to settle down so that it really forms a base that's what I like to do. It doesn't really become sticky. I feel that the MAC Paint Pot is stickier, and I don't like a sticky base, which is why I set it with a powder as well, and I feel that that sort of, those steps are what really makes, makes it work for me. So maybe that's something you can try if you've never tried that before yourself, and if you struggle with Super Shock Shadows from ColourPop creasing on you, then maybe go in with a double prime moment. It works for me anyways. Um, 
So yeah, let me move these out of the way as well and talk to you about my favorites first. So my favorites are the ones that I put at the top and my ultimate favorite, ColourPop Super Shock, is Ritz. And you'll see why. <laughs> because Ritz is the only one here that really has pan. This is a great one and done shadow. It has a beige sort of nude base that is very much like skin colored, you could say. And then it has a lot of cool toned, taupey, silvery, white sort of reflects. It's very sparkly, but not quite glittery, which is what I like. And this works great by, its, by itself, just all over the lid. But if you have a taupe matte shade that you put in the crease and all over the lid and you just tap this on top, you're gonna love it too. This works in the inner corner and it's just a really, really good one. And I really like pairing it with this shade as well, but we'll talk about So Quiche in a minute. Um, so let me swatch this for you. So Ritz, I mean, oh, it's such a stunning shade and I keep raving about it. That's what it looks like on my finger. I'm not sure if it's focusing. I think it's focusing on the shadows. Let me move everything away. There we go. And that is what Ritz looks like. So it looks perhaps a little bit like it's got a very yellow base here, a, a yellow cast, but I feel it doesn't really show when I put it on my lids at all. Um, you just really get that really lovely, almost wet looking lid when you wear this. And that's why it's one of my favorite one and done shadows. And it was in my shop, my sash for a few months this year. And I desperately want to go back to it. Let me talk about that other favorite. This is So Quiche, which was away for a while, but I believe they've brought it back. I'm not sure if it's still in stock, but they did bring it back when they relaunched some Super Shocks earlier in the, I think at the end of 2021. I did pick myself up a backup of both Ritz and So Quiche because these are my two favorite shades. And you can see here, this is a bit deeper. It's one of the deeper shades I have, but So Quiche is a taupe base with like gold, green, pink, and lavender sort of reflex to it. And it's very pretty by itself as a one and done shadow if you want something smokier, but it works really well layered under Ritz as well. So what I'll very often do is when I travel, I'll take Ritz and So Quiche. So Quiche for the lower lash line, Ritz on top, and sometimes I'll use like an angle brush with a little bit of so quiche just to deepen up the lower, the top lash line a little bit. And then I'm pretty much good to go. So these are like, in terms of like one and done shadow shades, like these are just, these take the cake for me. And there we have so quiche. And oh, look at that. Do you see how green it looks here? And then it's got that purple sort of flash, but it's got a taupe base. It's so, so pretty. And now we're here anyways. <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like if I top Ritz over it so that you can see the full effect here. Um, so this is what I like doing very often because Ritz, yes, it has a base, but it's not a very strong one. And do you just see that you can make it a lot more silvery and cool toned this way? Just saying. And then the top row was made up of other like one and done shadows that I love. Uh, is this, this is I Haunt This, and this is one that I actually decluttered and then I missed it in my collection and then I bought it again. Um, so it's a good one. This is similar to Ritz, but I feel it's more of like a rosy shade. It's not as neutral as Ritz is. I feel Ritz goes with everything. And this is a little bit more of a rose gold leaning shade. It's very pretty though, perhaps more of a champagne. That's perhaps the best way to describe it, but it does have a little less sparkle, but again, that cool tone to it. And that's what I love here. It does have a very warm rose gold sort of base, but the reflect on this makes it very wearable, even if you have a cool undertone. It's just, this is princess eyes in a shadow. Another great one and done shade. And this is another one that I love. This is Frog, and I was raving about this all fall because I was using it a lot layered with this shade from H&M that we'll get to in a minute, and I'll show you how those two layer in this video as well. But this is Frog. It's very similar to Ritz, but this has more of a blue-toned flip to it. So this is more of like a nude base, and instead of it being more like taupey silvery, this is more lavender blue. So it has a different flash to it, and it's very pretty. I still would like to get my hands on Sailor, if I'm not mistaken. That's a shade Sailor from ColourPop which is uh, like, 
it fits in that same category, but it has more of like a rainbow iridescent sparkle to it. So this is what Frog looks like. So it's got more of a pinky base in the, like if you turn your hand. So it's still flesh colored in its base, but then it has that blue sort of reflect to it, which I love. And then this is currently in my shop, my stash. This is a little quirky. And this was one where I was like, hmm, isn't that a bit deep? It looks like a really pretty taupe in the pan. But now that I've used it a few times, I'm realizing that it's very similar to Ritz, but like a more amped up version of it. It definitely has a deeper base tone to it, but it's also really pretty iridescent sparkly. It's more bronzy taupe leaning. So here you can see that it has a very strong sort of like bronzy brown base, very warm tone. Then look at that shade. It's a very pretty taupe once you once it really hits the light. But again, because of that deeper brown sort of tone, it's almost like a smoky quartz. That's how I would describe this. This is very pretty and it's like, do you see that it almost has like a bit of a hint of green to it? It's very pretty all over the lid and when you really blend it out, let me see if I can show you that, because this is of course a full on finger swatch. If you just use a little bit and you really blend it across the lid, do you just see what that does? This is one of my new, new favorite ColourPop Super Shocks. I hope you can still buy this. And then I have two more that are these like iridescent sparkly shades and everything else is quite a bit deeper or more colorful. This was from the Blooming Bouquet Duo from the Making Mobs collection. This is in Day Trippin. And this is sort of like the more purpley version of Frog, you could say. This is more of like a lavender, I would say. It definitely works pretty well with like those like mauve shades that were going on in the in the Making Mauves palette as well. So that's why I like this one. It's sort of like, and do you see it's just a little bit more like lavender blue. But again, very iridescent sparkly. This is perhaps more of an inner corner highlight slash topper for me. This all over the lid I find perhaps a little too much. Frog is a little bit more muted down. And then finally, I'm not sure what collection this was from, but this was limited edition, so I don't think you can still get it. This is Falling Up. And <laughs> can you see that? I mean, again, flesh color champagne leaning shade with a very sparkly flash. That's just what I like in my ColourPop Super Shocks, and that's why these are the ones that I like the best. This even has a bit of a hint of peach almost, which is why I like it. So that's what that looks like. Again, a little bit more intense. Uh, but still a pretty one and done shade. Again, it has a very nice, almost silvery champagne sort of flash. It has a bit more warmth than the others, but it's so, so pretty. And it's just a really good one. So we have another threesome here that I feel kind of goes together. One of the newer shades that I got is called Moonwalk. And this is a, I thought it was going to be more of a green sort of duochrome. It definitely looks like it in the pan. On the lids, I found this looked like a standard gold. So I felt it was more special looking in the pan than what it does on the lids. So this is not necessarily a recommendation for me, but it is still very pretty. If you like those like antique gold kind of shades, then this is for you. This is also, again, a good one and done shade for sure. Um, but it just, it pulls more gold than green when I put it on my lids. So maybe, maybe my skin tone is just not the right undertone. Perhaps if you have olive skin tone or a deeper skin tone, then I think, because then this is more of like, do you see how deep that flash is? Then it's more of a like neutral bit, like a flash if you have dark skin, I think. This is another one of the newer ones. This is Rooftop Cocktails. And I was thinking that it might be similar to Partridge, but I feel they're not quite the same. But I think this is what ColourPop now does that is closest to something like Partridge, which I'll show you in a minute. This is very pretty. You can just see it's like this oil slick kind of shade with like a very murky, grungy base and then just purple and blue. So this is really pretty, but this is not the kind of shade that I feel is super special because you have lots of powder shadows that do this as well. It's like a, in theory, it's just a blue brown. So if you really want a blue brown shade, I would say go with Sydney Grace's Red Chameleon. That's like one of my favorite blue brown shades ever. And then we have Partridge, and this is one that I like as a layering shade. This is a bit dried up though, 
Um, but I know you can use like baby oil or something to revive these. Uh, it still swatches, it still works. Um, do I still wear this a lot? No. Um, but it is a pretty shade. And this is... It's like a very deep taupey brown with like a green flash. It's just not as blue <laughs> as Rooftop Cocktails. It's more of like a green and I have a duochrome shade from Makeup Geek that I like layering over this. So that's usually like what I do when I wear this. So in any of my singles, I don't have a whole lot of warm tones, but these two I somehow kept around. So these are from the Wine and Only collection. This is in the shade Muse, and this is a really stunning, like, coppery rose gold, which a couple of years ago, rose gold was like my shade. Like, that was all I'd want to wear. Um, but this is sort of like reddish tone, but then it has that like pink sort of, oh, this is so, so pretty. If I go warm tones, then I want to wear something like this. And then we have Wine Down, and this is sort of like a burgundy shade, which is not necessarily my forte, but if you want to do a berry smoky eye, having like a berry murky cream shadow is just really going to help it come along. So that's why I have this one lying about. So this is very pretty. It's like a plummy base, then it has this really nice cranberry sort of vibe to it. So yeah, I like this more for like smoky eyes. And I do have to say with ColourPop Super Shocks, don't get too many of them. <laughs> um, because I feel that if you use them regularly and you use them with fingers, the oils of your fingers will keep them alive. But they'll start drying out if you don't use them enough. That's the way I feel anyways. Then we have a brighter shade. This is Ripple. Which... I'm not, I'm undecided on this. I feel again, I have this in a lot of duochrome shadows, so I don't really feel this is special enough anymore, but it is really pretty. It is that purple with a blue flash. And if you've seen my fun shimmer palette swatch party, then you know that I love a purple with a blue flash. And then for the two deepest shades, I have Dance Party, Long Since Discontinued, and Bay. And these I also again have because I like layering them with single shadows that I have. So Dance Party I like to uh, combine with a shade from Nabla, I believe it's called Selfish. Um, and that is a really stunning like purpley duochrome. And Dance Party is like a really dark, grungy, shimmering purpley goodness. So this is again not something I'll wear by itself, but it's great as like a base layer for like a really cool smoky purple vibe. And this is Bay, and Bay is like a black and blue with purple. It's a very special shade. I remember having a nail polish like this in like the 90s when I was a teenager. Um, and this again, I like layering underneath a Nabla set, a shade, which I believe is called Alchemy. Um, so the regular Alchemy, not Alchemy 2.0, but regular Alchemy. And this is sort of like the amped up version of Partridge, where it's like brownish plum and then blue like it is one of those like inexplainable sort of shades but yeah this is another great layering shade and finally oh, and finally we have these puppies so i have this sydney grace uh, pigment that i just wanted to show you but this h m sh uh, shadow in dauphine truffle i really like it's the best taupe i've ever bought it's a cream shadow that is more of a satin sort of moussey texture. Um, so it looks a little a little funky actually, but it just it just looks so pretty when you put it on. I didn't put on that much. It's creamy enough for it to really work with a brush. So I do like going in with a fluffy brush with this and just fluff it all over the lid and then into the crease and it just works really well. And then what I like doing, as I said, is put frog over it. So if you want to see this combination on my lids, I uh, would like to recommend you watch that video I did in May, um, which I'll put pop in the description box down below. But yeah, the combination of the two is just absolutely stunning because frog has more of a base to it and you just see much more of the sparkle it has. But now that I have tried all of these a bit more, I can also tell you that the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, if that's something you're looking for, go with H&M. I think these products are made in the same factory. In fact, the H&M Beauty makeup is also made in Italy, like Charlotte Tilbury is. And I feel that the formula of these 
is pretty much identical. So if you want Charlotte Silbury cream shadow at a budget, check out H&M because they do some lovely shades. They have a much larger offering than Charlotte Tilbury has. And everything Charlotte does is always with very warm toned. This is Pillow Talk, which is one of the less shimmery ones. Like this, this is a bit more moussey. Like I'm not saying it's 100% the same as the H&M one is, but they're very close in what these do. And this is pretty, but I need to use it as a base for the jewel pot in Walk of No Shame. Like, that Eyes to Mesmerize and Pillow Talk by itself, I mean, this just looks like I've got an eye disease. So it's not very pretty, but just something happens. Ooh, there goes the little stopper. Um, but if something just happens when I layer this really iridescent shade on top. They're like the same shade, I feel, even though this is Walk of No Shame. But I just feel that they just kind of need each other to really... Like, do you just see that it adds a little bit more to it? Oh, and the Jewel Pop, by the way, is very pretty, but again, by itself, I feel it doesn't do enough. I feel it needs more of a base layer to really get it to show up. So that's why I like combining the two, but I, don't, I wouldn't go out of your way to purchase this, these if you don't, if, you, if you're looking for a good cream shadow. So I have one of these discontinued Christian Dior ones. I'm not sure what these were called, but they've been, they've been out of stock for ages. I rescued this from my makeup declutter <laughs> several times by now. It got very dry, but it's very pretty. I believe it's in the shape Millennium, and it's this really pretty, like, cool tone green with a bit of a golden flip. Like, it's just very pretty. Great one and done shadow again. It, it's borderline silver, but not quite. And then I have my two Chanel ones. I have New Moon, which is also a bit dry. Can I open this now that my hands are a bit slippery? But this is really pretty. This is another one of those one and done shadows. It's so loose in the pan. But this is one of the things that I do like about my Chanel and Dior ones. Even though these get dry, you can still use them. Even if they start pulling from the sides. And this is very pretty, but it's very much more of a topper shade than something I like wearing by itself. So New Moon from Chanel. I think it's a bit of a cult favorite. It's very pretty. I bought it off of the recommendation of Lisa Eldredge years ago. Um, it's very pretty, but it's more of a topper for me. And then we have another Chanel one. This is Rouge Noir. This was limited edition for Christmas a couple years ago. Rouge Noir is Chanel's famous nail polish and lipstick shade, but they did an entire Rouge Noir collection a couple years ago, and that's when I got this. And this has been like my OG smoky eye base for years now, like this. It's like a black and red, like it's super smoky, but it's so pretty. And I do whip it out around the holidays usually. And then we have a couple of things left. I have the Air Mousse from Etude House. Yes, this is Etude House. So K-Beauty do some really pretty iridescent sparkly shades. So this is not really a cream shadow. It's more of a single shadow, but I didn't have this before. And I just wanted to show it to you because this is another great one and done shadow. Uh, this is in, oh, what's the shade name again? Something like Cherry Sparkling Popcorn or something like that. But this is sort of like Frog <laughs> by Colourpop in a way, but it's a bit more pinky. It's definitely a little bit different. And then we have Holika Holika's Moon Flash. This is no longer available. I think they di do still sell one of the other shades on Yes Style. And this is, again, a bit weird because it's... Is it a cream? Is it a pigment? Is it a glitter? I mean, it looks very funky. It's definitely a little chunky as well. This is so pretty on the lids though. You do have to, look at that. You do have to bear in mind that this transfers quite terribly. So when you put this on and you have deep set hooded eyes like I do, it will stamp itself to your top lid. Now I don't mind that, but I don't think it's for everyone, and this is very intense, but this is very pretty as a one-and-done shadow as well. Sadly, you can no longer buy it. And then, last but not least, I want to show you the Sydney Grace Pigment. This was gifted to me by a subscriber. I don't know what it's called, but it was just so pretty that I wanted to show this to you. It's... I'm not sure if you can see it here, but it's this very sort of iridescent, sparkly shade, so let me sort of flip it, shake it. So you have some pigment here. Ooh, I'm making a mess, which of course we were going to do. But this, 
I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. And it was so pretty when I first watched it that I was like, right, I need to show them this in a video. And Sydney Grace will be having their Christmas in July sale very soon, so maybe you can pick something like this up. But look at that. It's sort of like a, another one of those ColourPop Super Shocks, but like amped up. <laughs> it's very pretty. I really like this. Great one and done shadow for sure. So these are all of my liquid shadows. I have one that no longer fits into the little thing that I've got going on here. But let me show you what's in here. So this is what we've got going on here. We've got some Armani, we've got Essence, we've got Dear Dahlia, Rare Beauty, uh, this is Holika Holika, no, Etude House, Mutha Cosmetics, and some Stila still. Um, I just, I can't get rid of these. Mine aren't super dry, so I just keep them in my collection until they have completely dried up, but you can revive these with a little bit of mixing medium if you want to. Um, so from Stila, I have Smoldering Satin. These are so separated though. <laughs> There are, they're getting a little bit old, but, you know, if it still works, I mean, I do really like this, and I just tend to, like, top these all over the lid anyways, so nothing too crazy there. Let me just swatch all of these in one go. So this is Diamond Dust. This is my favorite one of the ones that I have. I, this is the one I've used the most. It's the most iridescent. Um, it doesn't have as much of a base. And then I have Wonderlust, which is more of a duochrome kind of shade. Um, but it is really pretty too. More of a warm tone. And then we have Kitten Karma, which is the driest one. So I hope it still swatches. Oh, this is very dry. But you know, I can still swatch it. So it will be fine. Which is like a rose gold. And then we have some multi-chrome liquid shadows from... Lethal Cosmetics. I still really want like the green like you see here from Essence but from this line because these are really pretty. Uh, this is in Payload. Oh my hands are covered in glitter. Um, this is like a really pretty like purple to blue. It's got a bit of green. Like it's really intense and I like it. I really really do. Ooh, can I swatch this? So you can see. So now it looks blue and then you just have a bunch of shifts happening. It It's not as shifty as some of like my Cleona shades, but I do like it for that. Because these are less intense, I feel these do still work if you like blend them out into a look, which with a lot of multi-chromes I feel does, isn't very successful. Um, but these you can definitely like play around with and like do multiple things with. This is in Gateway, and I thought I wasn't going to love it <laughs> when I got it. But then, when I used it, because it looks very pink in the tube, but it's more of like an iridescent green-yellow sort of sparkly shade, which I loved in the inner corner, um, but this can also work really well all over the lid. So depending on what you want to do, it's not as pink as it looks. We have another really sparkly one from Etude House. I don't know what the name of the shade is. It's in Korean, so I don't know. But this is their mirror Mirrorholic liquid shadow and this is really pretty. It's very similar to the Stila Glitter Ingalows, I feel, um, but then more sparkly. Like, whew. it's like liquid glitter, uh, very effortless, but it doesn't really get into your eyes and it's not as, you know, you don't have to faff around with it like you would with a glitter. Then one of the very few matte things I have here, this I still need to put on my eyes. This is from Rare Beauty. This is in the shade Nearly Mauve and it's their liquid shadow. So Rare Beauty doesn't offer a lot of like good eyeshadow options I feel, but then I spotted that they do this and I was like, ooh, this is sort of what I was hoping Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury to be <laughs> when I got that. So it is perhaps a little bit warm toned for my liking. But I think if you like blend this out, like I think it can be pretty. What do you guys think? And then we have Dear Dahlia, and I'm not sure what this is called either. It's in the shade Enchanted. This is one of their liquid shadows. It's very sparkly. This is just straight up glitter, but I don't know why, but this really, really intrigued me. It's got like chunkier glitters. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got like really chunky sparkles. 
Like, this is just so much fun, topped over certain things. But because it is in a liquid, you just have a lot more control than when this was a loose glitter and it would fall everywhere. Like, this will just stick down and it will be pretty, you know? So I'm pretty happy that I got this, but it's something I still need to play around with. And then we'll just tackle this before we get to the essence stuff. This is the Armani Liquid Shadow in the shade 37, which I believe is called Scarab, but the shade name isn't on here. And this is like my new favorite smoky shade, because this is like a black and green, and it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Like, in the tube, I feel it looks green, and then when you swatch it, this seems to have a bit of a blue. So I like that, because it pulls a bit more teal on me than true green. So it has especially when you blend it out. Like, look at that. It's a perfect, really deep teal. And then we have these ones. These were a limited edition collection from Essence last summer, um, and I was able to snatch them all up. These aren't the best, uh, I have to say. These crease really badly on me. Um, these were one of the very few things that don't really work with my double prime method, but they are pretty and they are fun and they work really well as liners, which is why I've kept them around. So these are the Chrome On Duo Chrome Liquid Shadows. I don't think you can still get them. This is 02 Chromology. And the reason why I don't love these is because they, they just, they just don't, you don't apply them like this to your lid. So you need to really build them up to get the effect you see in the tube. So these look prettier in the packaging than they do once applied, because when you start swatch, like rubbing them in, they just keep feeling very emollient, but they are pretty and they're nice and flippy. Like, I think this was a good move <laughs> on Essence's behalf. And then we have this plummy one, blue. This is Oh My Chrome 01. You do need to sort of blend them out to get the full effect, I feel. But then like, just do you see how sheer that is? But that's when you get the sh that's when you get the flip when you shear it out. But then when you just have this wash of something on your lid, you don't really see it. This is my favorite one. This is Chrome Addict, and this is the reason why I want to get the Lethal one in this shade. I'm not sure what the Lethal shade is called anymore, but this is the kind of multi-chrome I love. Blend it in. You can hopefully see that it has this green flip. It's really, really pretty. Um, this is Chromazing, which is like a blue, purple, green sort of like oil slick kind of shade. Um, it looks green here. <laughs> In real life, when I look at it, it looks purple, and to you it looks green. <laughs> so let me see if I can show you the flip. Oh, now you can see. See, there it is. There's the purple. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are just a little bit patchy. Especially the darker shades, um, they just didn't look as nice on the lids, I found. And then this is Chrome Over Baby, which is like pink. And there we have that one. So pink to gold to green. This is perhaps the flippiest one and the least patchy. So there you can really see that flash of something different. So yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to share with you in today's video. I hope you got some recommendations here for my favorite one and done shadows as well, because I thought I could kill two birds in one stone with this video. So please thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week, so if you'd like, stay tuned for more, and then I'd like to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!